Okay, remember your lines. When the dairy payroll truck stops, I stick the gun in your ear. You try to look scared. They give me the cash, and we're out of here. Got that? Hold it right there, or the Frisian gets it between the horns. Isn't that a jersey? Shut up. Hand over the payroll. What are you staring at? Okay, okay, I'll come quietly, which will be a first for me, by the way. Did that cow moo on me? It's chops for dinner if he did. Go on then, cop. Do the right speech. Jack T. Ladd, master criminal. You are under arrest, and you have no rights. A woman? I've been arrested by a woman? Not any woman, dirtbox. You've been arrested by Yizan Andropath, Federation police officer. Okay, computer. I've got that lad creep safely locked up in the brig. Get us out of here. All of a sudden, I'm computer? So what's wrong with calling me Booba? And an occasional police wouldn't hurt, you know. Sorry, Booba. Please plot us a course straight for alka -Seltz. All the way to alka -Seltz? What a schlep! Oi, oi, oi! I've picked up an emergency transmission from the Federation Space Navy. There's been a major disaster in the Alteraz Nebula sector, directly between us and alka -Seltz. Why do we always have such worries? Stay at home, I said. Settle down, I said. But, oh no. Calm down, Booba. Power up the hyperdrive. We'll simply hyperspace around the problem. Hey, babe. How they hang it? What are you doing out of your cell? Never mind about that. Guess what? You ain't gonna be returning me to alka today. Not now that I've destroyed your hyperdrive. You've done what? You're an even bigger moron than other men. You see, this is what happens when the men in your life are criminals. Why can't you find a nice doctor or a lawyer? Not now, Booba. Lad, you don't realize what you've done. Give me a break. It's my job to try to escape. And drop us all right in it. We needed to hyperspace around some major catastrophe ahead. Now we'll have to use impulse power instead. Booba, fire up the engines. Now hold on already, not so fast. We are very low on fuel. Oh, great. I knew smashing that mirror last week would bring bad luck. But I had to hit that jaywalker with something. We'd better find the nearest planet and requisition some fuel. And as for you, lad, just stay out of my way. <laughs> It's a medical kit with a syringe inside. That's my trusty maintenance droid. It's that reprobate Jack Ladd. Make yourself useful for a change. It's my lunchbox containing some cutlery. It's the navigation console. It's a terminal for the ship's computer. It's a pilot's chair. I can see space. The computer is voice activated. Keep up the good work, robot. We need to find fuel, Booba. Lucky for you, we are near a planet that is registered as a mining colony. Okay, I'll land us there. Booba assures me that these are set at their optimum levels. got no coordinates to enter.
You know, it's strange that I can't pick up any readings from the computers at the mining outpost. You should take this diagnostic cartridge in case the computers here need some repair. There's nothing useful in there. Here is the airlock control panel. This is a tightly sealed airlock door. This is the door to use when the ship is docked. Here's the lift that can take us down to our planet's surface. Okay lad, you've got a choice. Either I let you go here and you freeze to death, or you go and find some terranium gas to refuel my ship. Me? Why should I go? Because it was you, in your vain attempt to escape the long arm of the law, who sabotaged the hyperdrive of my ship. And since we don't have enough fuel to get you back to prison on impulse power, I have unanimously voted you to go find some. So what are you going to do while I do all the hard work? Make snowmen? <laughs> Sorry, snow persons. No, I want to look around a little. This is supposed to be an operational mining colony, but no one replied to my landing request, and the place looks deserted. Something is very wrong here, and I want to find out what it is. They're probably hiding from you. I know I would. I wouldn't expect you to care. You are devoid of social conscience, moral fiber, and, for that matter, dress sense. Hey, don't knock the jacket. This jacket and I go back a long way. Yeah, back to when that style was in fashion. Nah, couldn't be. That was before you were born. Now, are you going to find that fuel or what? I've got investigating to do. It stops the heat from the ship's engines. It's been damaged beyond repair. It leads towards a mine entrance. doesn't look as if it's working. It leads into the mine. It's the control platform for a crane. It's an elevator going down to the mining face. It's the winch for the elevator. It's a safety line for elevator maintenance workers. to dig through that. It's a pickaxe. One of the miners must have dropped it. happened here? No, it's like a ghost town. Something diabolic has occurred. Evil lives here. If that's an attempt to scare me, it won't work. Who's worried about you? It's me who's terrified. Hurry up and find that fuel. Okay, okay. This isn't easy, you know. I need you to go down in that elevator. You don't have to ask me to go down twice. Somehow I knew you were going to say that. It's 
a makeshift grappling hook. Hey, Jack! Get your butt up here! If you've quite finished, I've got things to do. I can see a rocky overhang high above me. I can't do that. That would be a waste of time. It's a halogen lamp. Do I have to pick up everything? Who's this? I better search him. He was the executive officer of this mining colony. It's the identification card from the mining colony's ex-executive officer. the circuit bank for the backup computer system. It looks as if it's working. It's a disk drive with a disk in it. It's a slot for inserting identification cards so the computer can access sensitive information. It's the circuit bank for the main computer system. This is where I can access the mining colony logbook. It looks damaged. It's a smash computer screen. It's the master console for all the computers. An explosion has blown a hole in the roof. Hmm. It appears that the main processor of the captain's logbook is faulty. I'll have to replace it. I've already taken the disk out. I can't do that. The log is being transferred to disk. Sure you're not cold? Some hot chicken soup would be good for you, you know. Can you read this disc, Booba? This is the diary of the outpost commander. Boy, this is bad news, Yizan. 
The reports that the whole facility was attacked by some alien invasion force. These aliens seemingly entered the nebula out of nowhere, although the commander appears to think that they have come from another dimension. He writes a final plea that should anyone find this information after his death, they should endeavor to find the site of the trans-dimensional breakthrough and seal it up to stop the invasion. We must stop this alien invasion. Haven't we got enough worries? Suddenly you have to go and solve the problems of the whole galaxy? It's my duty, Booba. Okay already. I suppose we could help a little. I am picking up alien transmission signals from two planets in our vicinity. It is possible that the aliens have set up beacons on these planets to relay their signals between their invasion fleet and the trans-dimensional rip. I suppose we could track down these beacons and attempt to triangulate their signals to find the source of the breakthrough in space. Sounds good to me, Booba. Add those two planets to my navigation console and I'll get us on our way. Take off first. It's a useless decoration. She's the welcoming hostess. It's a plant. I'm not gonna search there. This servo droid is a similar model to mine. I'll leave the droid to carry out its duties. Welcome to the Lucky Store. We are the interplanetary famous casino and hotel center. I'm looking for a transmission beacon. I'm sorry, madame. I really don't know anything about any beacons. Please let me in. I can only do that if you are on my memorized list of expected guests. Now listen, girl. You obviously don't know who I am. I'm afraid not, madame. Okay, let me help you out. Who was the last person you let in? That was His Excellency, Zambia Zeb. I'm actually his personal belly dancer. The complex has its own in-house entertainment. Union rules dictate that no external dancers are permitted entry. About this Zambier Zeb, I've not been totally honest with you. He's a master criminal, and I'm hot on his trail. But the last famous gaming convention decreed that all gambling establishments are to be considered as legal neutral zones. I cannot allow you in to arrest him here. About this Zambier Zeb, I've not been totally honest with you. I found the glove he dropped outside. If you can show me the glove, I will let you in. About this Zambier Zeb, I've not been totally honest with you. I have an important message for him. If you would like to tell me the message, I will be sure to pass it on to His Excellency. About this Zambier Zeb, I've not been totally honest with you. In fact, I'm his wife. You mean you are her viciousness Countess Contavia Skulldigger, last of the Viper Devourers? Uh, yeah, that's me. 
And if you value your job here, you'll let me in immediately. Of course, madame. I am truly sorry. I just didn't recognize you now that you've had all your warts removed. Goodbye, then. Have a prosperous day, madame. He's one of the guests here. If I get any closer to him, I think I'll be blinded by his shirt. It's a painting. It's a fake old master. It's a data is painting of a herd of bison stampeding across a savanna. Probably. I see nothing special. There's nothing worth looking at. She's no brain surgeon. Can I speak with the boss? You must have a good reason for doing so. He's a busy man, you know. Who are you? My name is Ruthie Papal de Papal. I'm Tenant's woman. He's the boss here, you know. What sort of a man is Tenant? He's a bit of a slippery rogue. But he's a man with a lot of ambition and a humongous credit limit. And that's okay with me. Why stick with a hoodlum? Tenant's a vast improvement on my first boyfriend. He was a thief, a drunk, and a total male chauvinist pig. But then he did have a certain charm. Sounds like someone I know. Don't you want to be an independent woman? Don't worry. I only stick with a man once I have a use for him. You know, someone to finance this season's wardrobe. But the trick is to let him think he's in control. If a man even thought he had control over me, I'd be forced to rip off the first accessible appendage I could grab. What's your opinion of men? I need a man around for me to feel complete. Me, him, and his credit card. Maybe that's a sensible attitude. If it's only his bank account you expect to rise, you're in for fewer disappointments, I suppose. Are you only concerned with your clothes? Goodness, no. How shallow a person do you think I am? I'm just as concerned about my hair. I need to ask for authority to gamble. Oh, yes, of course. Go on through. It's connected to the resort's central computer. It's a trashy reprint of an old poster. I bet he's never been there. It's a window leading to the balcony. This must be the boss's office. The plants have been watered. It's a luxury desk for head honchos. He's the owner of this joint. Who are you? The name's Tenant. I own this place. And who are you? You sound andropath. As far as you're concerned, I am the law. Do you run this place lawfully? Surely. Some rules are there to be broken. And so are criminals' bones, mister. Why was your planet not affected by the alien invasion? It's all to do with me being a businessman. I have struck what you might call an association with this invading force of aliens. What is this association with the aliens? They have agreed to leave me alone if I do them a few favors. You have betrayed the human race! I have done nothing of the sort. In fact, my business is providing a valuable service to the human race. So that I can continue my business peacefully, I have agreed to impound any ships that are a threat to the aliens. I am also simply maintaining one of their transmission beams. Where is this beacon? Oh no, I'm not gonna tell you that. I've worked hard to build up this place and I'd appreciate you not ruining my deals. I gather I need permission to gamble. That's correct. Rules of our rather exclusive operation here. I'll need to know details of your profession. I am a Federation police officer, the best there is. Aha, I see. I'm afraid that since you're connected with the Federation, I must impound your ship. What? Don't be ridiculous. Calm down, Miss Andropath. 
If you wish, you can submit a written complaint which I will be happy to look at. In the meantime, you have my full authority to enjoy the many facilities that we offer you. I'm going now. Don't hurry back. The cabaret isn't performing tonight. He's a card dealer. She's no doubt here to blow all her pension money. I believe the correct term for his job is behavioral supervisor and enforcer. I don't think she's gonna be very much help to me. There stands another poor gambler. He's busy gambling his money away. They're playing a game. He's a sharp shuffling dealer. I think my sub-molecular theory on the atomic origins of quark particles will be somewhat lost on him. Please do not interrupt. We're in the middle of a game. Leave me alone. I'm busy playing. Well, hello there. It's not often I see a female in here who I can describe as a real woman. Do you come here often? Aren't you worried about the alien invasion force? Listen, honey. In this place, no one worries about the galaxy outside. Did you know the owner has made a deal with the aliens? Well, that doesn't surprise me. I've heard Tenon has kept some very crooked company in the past. What do you think of Tenant? If there were odds on Tenant's strongest character traits, the rank outsider would be morality, and the clever money would be on greed. Have you got any chips you can lend me? I'm sorry. I only give presents to my special friends. Do you know much about gambling? Oh, yeah. I've been playing here for years. But I'm sure you could teach me a few new rules, huh? Do you think this is an honest joint? Well, I've had my doubts a few times. What made you suspicious of the betting here? Well, the dealer does quite well at the blackjack table. He always claims to be playing with only one deck. But I'd like to bet that he's got a few extras tucked away. Of course, I'm not the betting type. Are you here just to use cliché chat-up lines? Not at all, sweetheart. But if I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? I'm sorry. I've obviously mistaken you for someone with a personality. Well, I was only trying to be friendly. I must tear myself away from you. Hurry back soon now. Hello, sexy. <laughs> Haven't we met before? Are you here just to use cliché chat-up lines? Not at all, sweetheart. But if I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? Keep on talking, big boy. You never know your luck. I can feel our souls growing closer together, baby. Have you got any chips you can lend me? For you, my sweet, nothing is too much. After all, if I scratch your back, I'm sure you'll return the compliment. Huh? Don't worry. I know exactly what part of you I want to scratch. Hey, I'm a card short here. I'm so sorry, madame. I can't imagine how that happened. I shall deal a new hand. There's no point in me stealing that card. You lose, I'm afraid. Ah, there, baby. I never forget a friendly face, especially when it's on a willing body. Have you got any chips you can lend me? For you, my sweet, nothing is too. After all, if I scratch your back, <laughs> I'm sure you'll return the compliment. Huh? Don't worry. I know exactly what part of you I want to scratch. There's no point in me stealing that card. 
Hey, I'm a card short here. I'm so sorry, madame. I can't imagine how that happened. I shall deal a new hand. Excuse me, madame. That's the dealer's card. You lose, I'm afraid. speak with the boss? You must have a good reason for doing so. He's a busy man, you know. I can prove the betting here is rigged. That sounds quite important. Please go right in. I have proof of crooked gambling. That's impossible. As you can see, I have two identical cards dealt to me in a game downstairs that claims to only use one deck. I have witnesses to this. I could close you down, fella. What do you want? My ship returned and the position of the beacon. I will return your ship, but I cannot be the one to tell you where the beacon is. Now please, leave this place. My life was so much simpler before you arrived. I'm going now. Don't hurry back. It's just a painting. He's the concierge of this place. It's a hotel concierge's desk. It's an ordinary plant. It looks like there are several rooms down there. I'm awfully sorry. Only registered guests are permitted through to our suites. Good day to you, madam. How may I help you? Do you know if the gambling here is honest? I'm afraid I do not concern myself with that aspect of the life here. What do you do here? I run all the housekeeping matters in this fine establishment. Can you give me an example of a job you organize here? Menu composition. You sound really important. I've had extensive training and many years of experience in all the finest places of this galaxy. It's very kind of Madam to recognize these facts. Obviously, we're both of similar good reading. Is this a good place to work? Exquisite, madam. I feel my sole purpose is to ensure the smooth running of a top-class establishment. Very few people feel such job satisfaction. Oh, I know that feeling. When I'm tightening my grip around the scrawny neck of some wimpy male whom I've been tracking for the last two weeks, that's when I know I love my work. Um, I think you've lost me there, can you give me an example of a job you organize here? Room maintenance. Can you give me an example of a job you organize here? Carpet cleaning. Can you give me an example of a job you organize here? Food purchasing. Can you give me an example of a job you organize here? Staff rotors. Can you give me an example of a job you organize here? Repair work. Can you give me an example of a job you organize here? Sweet allocation. Can you give me an example of a job you organize here? Window cleaning. Do you know which company cleans your windows? Certainly, ma'am. I have the details here. It appears we use the Smear and Clear window cleaning company, ma'am. She's the receptionist. help you I was here earlier talking with your boss I must have been at lunch I think I might have left my glasses behind in Mr. Tennant's office I've just tidied up the office actually I'm afraid I didn't find any glasses you look busy oh yes Mr. Tennant always gives me a lot of important paperwork to do 
have you worked here? I've been Mr. Tennant's personal assistant for eight happy years now. He's the best boss I've ever had. Actually, he's the only boss I've ever had, but he's always telling me how important I am. Do you enjoy your work? Oh, definitely. I don't even mind that poor Mr. Tennant's never been able to give me a wage increase. Well, you know, because of the galactic recession. Mind you, soon Mr. Tennant says I can move up to being his deputy administrator. What would you do as a deputy administrator? Oh, I'd deal with all of Mr. Tennant's important paperwork. Maybe I should double check that I left nothing behind earlier. I'm sorry, but I really can't let you into the office whilst Mr. Tennant is away. Could you possibly check the office for my glasses one more time? I really can't leave my desk at the moment. I've got so much important paperwork to deal with here. How are these office doors opened? Some sort of electronic mechanism. Only I can open them from my desk. Mr. Tennant says that I'm in charge, you see. Is Mr. Tennant in? I'm afraid he's out at a meeting. He's a very busy man, you know. Can you let me into the office? Oh, no. Not while Mr. Tennant's out. I hope you understand. I could get into a lot of trouble for letting the wrong people into his office. Who is allowed into the office? Well, no one really. Besides myself, of course. Mr. Tennant trusts me, you see. Oh, yes, there's Miss Papal de Papal. She's allowed in, little tart. Oh, and sometimes the window cleaners have to do their thing. I worked for the window cleaning company. I'm sorry. Why didn't you say so earlier? Can you just confirm the name of the company for me? Of course. It's smearing clear. Lovely. Sorry to be so particular. Here's the key to the windows. Go right through. The readings indicate that the transmission beacon is placed on the roof of this building. I can't leave things all over the place. I could climb up that if I was suicidal enough. That's a long way down. And that's an even longer way up. All in the line of duty, I guess. Vader's communication node. That gives me one of the vectors to the invader's homeworld. Time to get back to the Relentless.
very nice. You have to leave it so long before we talk? I've been busy getting the beacon coordinates, Booba. <laughs> See, the beacon on Gelt gave me the coordinates 603, 704. Those coordinates seem to have registered. like a war-torn wasteland outside. I'll let you know when I find the transmission beacon coordinates. Right there, I'm requisitioning this ship in the name of the Federation. You can't do that! I'm a registered Federation law enforcer. I paid my subscription. Sorry, Lady Cop, but my orders are to keep this ship right here. My corporal is going to remove your ship's navigational gyro, just so you don't get any funny ideas about stealing your ship back. Hey, do I look like a thief? I'm here to sunbathe. My skin needs the sun's rays. Shut up about your appearance for once, lad. Listen, Army Man, you'll be sorry about this. I'm sure you'll fill out lots of complaint forms, call my superior officer, and make a thorough nuisance of yourself. But there's a war going on here, and the Army's in charge. Thank you for your cooperation. You are free to go where you please, unless it's a restricted area, of course. Have a nice day. Maybe we can find out some answers here. Let's find the forces, Commander. You should try to steal our navigation gyro back. Put your qualifications to good use. <laughs> Real funny. Don't give up the day job, though. I don't think the world of comedy is ready for your level of wit. It's the latrine. It's a stick used for stirring the contents of the latrine. It's a flagpole. Some things aren't worth having. It's a white flag. I hope I don't get the dirty end. It's the command tent. It's got maps all over it. He's the leader of our ground forces. Give me my ship back. No, it belongs to the army now, miss. What do you know about the invaders? They're better equipped, and they outnumber us ten to one. But I've got a plan. What is your plan? Well, our casualty rates for this week are way below the computer projections. So I've sent my best men on a suicide mission to secure the invaders' communication beacon. They'll die for sure. I'll save those men. I wouldn't bother. It's not as if they're officers or anything. Do you think I should join your army? Ah, oh, a new recruit. Well, there are great benefits to joining the army. The 
the camaraderie, the smutty songs, the initiation rituals, the preservation of outdated class oppression. I'll have to be quick. It's part of the Colonel's spectacles. I don't need to use it. I have perfect eyesight. It's the only water for miles around. It's a Wiltbury tree. It's a Wiltbury, renowned for its anesthetic properties. Kind of like Jack's anecdotes, really. It's an empty syringe. Now I can drug people. It's a metal grill. It's a drum full of tank fuel. It's bolted shut. There's no point in doing that. The oil drum's about to explode. I'd better get out of here. I can't leave things all over the place. It's that guard's cup of coffee. It's the entrance to the stronghold. It's an Annihilator class battle tank. I'll never be able to open that door. He's guarding the tank. I've always wanted to drive one of these. It's the manual turret guidance viewfinder. It's the fire control computer. I haven't saved the soldiers yet. There's something on the outside of the tank. Get off my tank, you idiot! Oh no! The safety switch is on! I can't use the cannon! The switch can only be deactivated on the outside of the tank! Those soldiers are doomed! Make yourself useful and switch the safety switch off! It was you, wasn't it? You destroyed that tank which was about to kill us. I don't know why you did it, but thanks anyway. I couldn't sit there and watch you die. It was the right thing to do. It's the 
invader's beacon. Now I've got one of the vectors to the invader's home world. You're safe. I detected a lot of gunfire. Are you trying to give me an overload here? Stop fussing, Booba. I've got the beacon transmission coordinates. Now, let me see. The coordinates I read on Bruegus were 525. Six, eight, one. The beacon on Gelt gave me the coordinates six o three, seven o four. Those coordinates seem to have registered. Sam, you should hear the news. I am receiving an urgent distress call. What's wrong with these people? Don't they know we're busy? It seems there is a group of colonists in trouble on a nearby planet. You'll want to investigate, I suppose. We can't ignore a distress call, Booba. Okay. The details of the planet are in your navigator. You know, you're looking a bit pale. Not now, Booba. Are you eating enough? Not now, Booba. Oh, you really like your hair like that? You know, I hate to interfere. Not now, Booba. You know, you're looking a bit pale. Not now, Booba. It's a jungle out there. He's seen better days. I'm not gonna search there. There's a very scared looking mother with her child. He's the leader of the colonists here. Hello there. I'm not gonna hurt you. Oh well, all this fighting must have made her real nervous. Leave me be. Who are you then? Good day, ma'am. I'm Narm Nepom, proud member of the IXMF. We are here to help the colonists battle against their organic enemy. Why did you join this unit? They had the biggest guns. Is it difficult to join the IXMF? Well, I had to undergo a psychological test to ascertain my sanity. 
Once I failed that, I was snapped up. What is the IXMF? We are the Interstellar Xenophobic Mercenary Force. What does the IXMF actually do? We sort out trouble, ma'am. It is often said, where there is trouble, there is the IXMF. Our motto is, ready for action. What have you done so far here? We have been preparing ourselves. We are ready for action. Have you encountered any creatures? Well, not really, no. But when we do, we're ready for action. What's your plan? We don't know yet. But when we think of our plan, it will be full of action, and we'll be ready for it. Carry on playing toy soldiers. Bye now, ma'am. Who are you? I'm one of the settlers on this planet. I've somehow been elected to be the representative of our small group. What's happening on this planet? I'm afraid our plight here has not been a happy one. Soon after we arrived here, we were overrun by some hideous creatures. Are you defenseless against these creatures? Well, the Federation dispatched a core of the IXMF to help us out. What can we do to help? We've discovered that there's a spawning organism that produces the eggs that hold the creatures. We desperately need to destroy this spawner. We'd also like to get our hands on one of the unhatched eggs to study its morphology. How would I destroy the spawner? We reckon that the best tactic would be to destroy the limbs first before attacking the head. Have the IXMF been effective? No, they've been completely hopeless. That comes as no surprise. Where are these beings? They seem to like the dark. They live in the network of caves, only venturing out in the night. Have you heard about the alien invasion force? I'm afraid we've got enough problems down here with our own little alien force. I hope things get better for you. So do I. Listen up, Jack. These poor people are in a real mess here, and you're volunteering to help out. As long as it gets me away from this nutcase Narm. It seems this planet has been overrun by some weird creatures. Your friend Narm is part of the IXMF group who came to blow away these vermin. I don't think their violent ways are being appreciated. I want you to find one of the creature's eggs for the colonists to study. So whilst I'm snooping around some deadly beings completely unarmed, exactly what are you going to do? Stop being such a moaning wimp, lad. Don't worry about me. I'm going to destroy the mother creature that is spawning all the others. Hey, we at the IXMF don't need any help. I'm off to splatter those monsters all over the cave walls. How pathetic. Little boys never achieve anything unless a woman's around. He looks in pretty poor shape. It's a tent belonging to the colonists. Looks like another casualty of war. I don't think it's fair for me to disturb a man who's in enough trouble as it is. Have you found that egg yet? Listen. This job requires a man of great skill and patience. Well, I hope you find him then. Did you know that guy who took off into the caves? Oh, yeah. That's Narm Napalm. I've come across him before, but I had hoped it would be a bit longer before I came across him again. Is Narm dangerous? No, not really. Mind you, I gather that as a child, he was voted boy most likely to accidentally destroy the universe. Could Narm help us? Narm helped me once and it resulted in the destruction of a whole sky city. I promised myself that I'd never rely on his help again, ever, never in a million years, even if my life depended on it. I've got to go splat a spawning creature. This is a snarling little bite puppy. The stench from these boots is likely to kill off any nearby wildlife. That IXMF psychopath Narm has left his gear here. This pack of flares could come in useful in those caves. Here lies a girl's best friend. It's a magazine for an automatic rifle. He's one of those dumb mercenaries. I see nothing special. I'm not touching that stuff mainly because I've got a pretty good idea where it's been. Yahoo! 
I'm in business. I'm ready for a shooting spree. It's a 12 millimeter automatic rifle, state of the art. That would be a waste of time. This is the spawner that produced all those creatures that I've been wasting. I don't think I should try to make friends. won't be getting any more problems from that spawning creature. My people truly appreciate your help. It looks like you got here just in time. You should have put a woman on the job from the start, instead of a bunch of inept male boneheads. Anyhow, I wish you and your people luck in the future. Won't you stay a while? The least we owe you is a meal. No, I'm afraid I really must leave. I have another pressing matter to attend to. A woman's work is never done, you know. has told us about how you are helping us and I just wanted to thank you. I'm doing no more than my duty dictates.
I'm doing my best to help you. And we appreciate it. So listen, you have no children, and your body is not getting any younger. Not now, Booba. I ought to get the computer to survey the place and see what's out there. I want to leave this planet first. to get the computer to survey the place and see what's out there. Can you plot us a course for the source of the beacon transmissions? Sure. It would seem that the source is from the area known as the Corrupticum. The Corrupticum? That's the headquarters of the taxman! Now there's a profession. Maybe you might need a taxman with prospects? If it's a choice between a taxman and a thief, I know which one I'd choose. What's taking so long, Booba? Ay, ay, ay! Remember the disc I read for you before? Ay, ay, ay! What's wrong, Booba? Infected! Virus! Ay, ay, ay! Shut down! Reboot! Sadie, Sadie, give me your answer, do! Oh, great. Just what I need right now. Booba's contracted a virus, and I need her to calculate the exact position of the rip in space. I'm gonna have to land on the nearest planet to give Booba time to reboot and clear her systems. It seems that Booba is blocking my use of the navigation system. I'm gonna have to switch Booba off, and I can only do that from outside the ship. There's no point in doing that. These doors are under my control now, Booba. Seems the radar is no longer functioning. This is the right place for a captain to be, at the helm of her ship. Behind this panel lies my only way of disconnecting Booba. should put a stop to Booba's ramblings.
Nova has been infected by a computer virus. Whilst she's switched off, she can reboot her systems. I can see barren mountains. Okay. While the computer's rebooting, I'm going to explore. You do that. I'm going to find some food. I'm starving. Listen, while we're stuck here, keep out of trouble. Hey, what kind of guy do you think I am? A low-life sleaze. Yeah, but I'm kind of cute, ain't I? I've met worse, but then I shot them. He's the holiest guy on this planet. What is this place? This is Haven, a tranquil place of rest and worship where travelers can find food and shelter, warriors can find peace and harmony. And all crime and evil has been eradicated. I've heard that one before. Who lives here? There are only the monks who tend the land, care for the livestock, a little too much in my opinion, and they look after the holy artifacts. What are the holy artifacts? The holy artifacts ensure our peace and harmony. The pillar of light shows us the way. The hexagon of truth shows us how to get there. And the flower of fire gives us the strength for our spiritual journey. Where do the monks come from? The pillar of light brings them forth into the world from the oblivion that is ignorance. They remain here for the rest of their lives. I'll be back if I need to know anything else. It's a brilliant column of searing light. I don't know what it could be. Great. Some food at last. Well done, greedy guts. You have committed the most heinous of sins. Violation of the sacrifice is almost the worst crime you can commit. You will therefore be imprisoned for the rest of your natural lives. Think yourself lucky, heretics. If you violated the holy flower of fire, the punishment would be death! You and your stomach! How are we gonna get out of this one? It's no good. We're locked in. This is all your fault! Now just leave me alone while I think of a plan! Touchy. It's a long way down. This is a really dumb idea. It 
It's a flower. I wonder why it's here all by itself. It doesn't feel right to ruin such a lovely floral display like this. Maybe if I was in disguise... He's one of those religious fanatic types. I bet he's taken a vow of silence. It's a fat for pressing wine grapes. It's a kerosene lamp. They're used for storing wines. It's where the pressed grape juice comes out. I don't have time to get drunk. They're only potatoes. It's a bag of yeast for fermenting. They're just loaves of bread. Do that. That wine needs some extra zing. Let me try some of this stuff. Now look what you've done. I shall have to wash this wine off my habit. Don't come out of the water. There's a lady present. That would be a waste of time. There's no point in doing that. My pockets are getting full up. I can't carry anything else. anything else. I'm in control of the situation. Stay here. I'll create a diversion. Great. I'm in jail. Just what I was trying to avoid. I'm gonna lay a trail of clues that leads to this cell. That will divert the guards long enough for me to get to the ship. Well, hurry up. I've got an aversion to incarceration. who has deflowered our holiest relic. We shall disintegrate the off-worlder before the entire monastery. Go and grab the offender from his vile cell and take him to the Pillar of Light. Bring the off-worlder. Go forth and seek the afterlife, sinner. Oh, I just love religion. I didn't think they were really gonna kill him. I'll miss that rogue. Guess I'll just have to stop the invaders myself. I bet he's... Thank you. 
Bubba, thank the stars you're back online. Oh, what pain I had. Like pain you've never had before. You know I hate to complain, but... Booba, something terrible has happened. That Jack has been killed and I'm responsible. So, the thief is dead? Where is the problem? Oh, Booba. I know Jack was not your idea of an ideal human being, but he did have his good points. Not many, true. But now he's gone. Listen, my girl. You must carry on with what you came here to do. I will take us to the trans-dimensional break in space, and you must finish this nasty alien invasion business. That way, you have not lost Jack in vain. You're quite right, Booba. Let's go. I can see a huge space station on the verge of destruction. Going that way won't help me. It's come off a wire or something like that. gonna search there. It's blocking the doorway. Hmm, who's this? Who are you? I am Grand Lord Master Papao de Papao. Formerly of the planet Shmuel, now the first interdimensional traveler in history. You were on Shmuel? I owned Shmuel! Until some fool called Jack Ladd got me transported to Dimension 238. You know Jack Ladd? I was all set to become the richest man in the universe, and he stole my transitron! What's a transitron? It's a purple crystal used by the taxmen to access their stores of money and their files, too. They wanted to keep it safe, so we're better than another dimension. The transitron is the only device that can transport things between dimensions. Unfortunately, that idiot lad broke it. I have only one part of the transitron left. What happened here? It was terrible. They just appeared and killed. Everybody. All the humanity. Who killed everyone? An alien force from Dimension 238 has invaded our universe and is set on destroying the human race. How do I stop the invaders? Beats me. Maybe if you reversed the process they used to get here, the resulting imbalance would suck them back into their own dimension. You're under arrest. As if I care. Look around you. We're all doomed to die. Where's the other part of the transitron? I don't know. It got lost when some loony in combat dress attacked me. Give the transitron to me. You're welcome.
heck is that? I feel sick. Thank the stars. You're safe. Uh, not that I care, you understand. We've got to close the portal. It was created here, and if we can shut it off, the invaders will be cut off from their home world. So we'll have to surrender. See you later, worm. How did you get here? I thought you were dead. Typical of a woman. Those monks were retired tax men. The Pillar of Light is a teleport device where they send tax men too old to work anymore. They can't let them back into society, not with what they know. Their memories must be wiped too, so they're oblivious to the truth. I've got the Transitron, but it's missing a piece. Have you seen it? I got it, but it didn't have any effect on the anomaly, so I left it there. See you later, worm. It looks like the Pillar of Light. See nothing special. It's the rip in the dimensional fabric. It's a fragment of purple crystal. We did it! We saved the galaxy! Please don't turn me in. I'll be good. Honest. Okay. I'll tell the court you helped me save the galaxy. Hey, I did all the work. You're not taking the credit for my heroism. What heroism? Listen, you sniveling piece of... Wouldn't be long before I had you behind bars, lad. Yizan Andropath always gets her man. Mind you, in your case, I use the term man in the loosest possible sense. Enjoy the journey. Wait a minute. You can't just leave me here, just when we were starting to get on. Besides, I'm starving. Don't you know the way to a man's heart is via his stomach? Believe me, lad, if I wanted to get to your heart, I'd take the more direct route. And I'd use a blowtorch to help me. Here's some food to ensure I bring you to justice alive. Hey, what's the point of leaving the food there? Mind you, if my tongue could reach that far, I bet you'd soon let me out. Dream on, lad. It's the switch to control the light in my prison cell. It's a cell door. It's a funnel for the male prisoners to use in zero gravity when they feel the urge. Even though my eyes tell me that looks inedible, my stomach tells me otherwise. Whee! Oops. Hey, Shorty, over here. I'm sorry, but I am unable to help you, sir. I'm only a maintenance droid. Okay, then. Fix the light in my cell. It's broke.
It's an indigestible processed food pellet. I should know, I've chewed it long enough. for freezing fires. It's the navigation control core. This panel probably covers the hyperdrive controller. It's the ship's fusion reactor. This contains a spare supply of terranium gas that fuels the ship's impulse drive. I'd rather tamper with something really important, like the ship's hyperdrive. all my possessions. I should be careful where I put things. I think I've damaged the temperature control. Hey, robot! There's something wrong with the temperature setting of the hyperdrive system. Thank you, sir. I shall report this to my captain. I'd better get out of here before that lousy cop catches me. Don't disturb Andropath, I'll be free to try to disable this ship. security pass card. It's a cuddly toy. I don't feel like talking. I'm not going to risk the computer alerting Andropath. Hmm. The pungent odor of cheap perfume seems to be getting stronger. That cop must be coming back this way. I'd better get out quickly. should leave Andropath alone at the moment. She'll probably get all emotional just because I broke out of her little prison. See the ship's hyperdrive inside. It's the ship's hyperdrive. I've got to get rid of it permanently. I'd rather tamper with something really important, like the ship's hyperdrive. Hey! 
Hey, what do you think you're doing? Nothing, really. I've just given the ship's hyperdrive the freedom it deserves. You're an even bigger fool than I imagined. And I can imagine quite a fool. You've really landed us in it. I was only doing what comes naturally to a guy like me, trying to escape. What's the big deal? I've just received a transmission warning all ships in the area of a major disaster in this sector. Since we're low on fuel, I thought we'd avoid the area by hyperspacing around it. I shouldn't be surprised that bringing a male on board my ship means immediate disaster. For testosterone, read trouble. Oh, I see. Exactly how low on fuel are we? Well, we're going to have to land on the nearest planet and try to refuel. Hopefully, we'll be able to make it across this sector on impulse power. Since you're obviously not even capable of sitting still in a cell, you may as well make yourself useful. You can help me get us out of the mess that you've caused. But beware, lad. I'm watching your every step. Well, be sure to notice my cute hip swivel movement. Well, this is just great. Here I am, pride of the Federation police, stranded on an ice cube in the middle of nowhere with a stupid, useless, thieving jailbird. Listen, it's not my fault you didn't pack enough fuel to get to the prison on impulse drive. We wouldn't have to use the impulse drive if you hadn't sabotaged the hypodrive. Oh, so what was I supposed to do? Sit back and let you drag me halfway across the galaxy just to throw my butt in jail? You were supposed to stay in your cell on board my ship, not break out. I couldn't help it. I get claustrophobic. I have a morbid fear of being trapped in coffins, too. Maybe I'll just have to cremate you then. And it could be earlier than you think if you don't find some fuel for the impulse drive. Me? You're the cop. You want to take me in, you find some fuel. Yes, I am a cop. And yes, I have a gun. And yes, I will blow your testosterone-ridden head clean off if you don't do as you're told. Well, if you'd asked that nicely to begin with, I'd have found some by now. Just one question. Where do I find it? Okay. The ship's computer said that this is a mining colony where they extract terranium gas. If you fill the gas canister from the Relentless with terranium, we can get off this ice ball. Aren't you going to help me? No way! For one thing, you got us into this mess. And for another, I want to find out why there wasn't any reply to my landing request. I've got a bad feeling about this place. And you want me to wander about on my own looking for fuel? I'm unarmed. After all that time you spent in your cell, just waft your armpits at anything hostile. That'll stun it. But... Just get the terranium, lad. The sooner you get it, the sooner we're out of here. Found out anything yet? What's it to you? Find the fuel yet? No, I thought not. Still looking for clues, huh? Being a professionally thorough detective takes time, patience, and understanding. So quit bugging me! What did you want me to do again? Find some fuel and refuel my ship. How many times do I have to tell you? I'm cold. Well, the sooner you find some fuel, the sooner we can get out of here. I'm hungry. Go and eat some yellow snow, then. I don't talk to the police. It's against my professional code of conduct. Good. It's about time you shut up.
So you're the man giving my Yazan so much trouble, eh? Jackala, the little thief. Am I right or am I right? That's correct, computer. Computer schmooder. My name is Booba. Now tell me, does a thief make a good living? Why do they call you Booba? Ah, such jokers my designers were. They used to say that if I was around, the pilot was better off on board another. Do you look after the whole ship? You should only know how much I have to do around here. So you control everything? Well, I do have some slave droids and subsystems. I'm very proud of them. Do you want to see some photos? No thanks. Maybe later. Could you let me escape? You are a bad boy, little Jack. And my Yazan specializes in capturing people like you. Yes, but do you think she's really comfortable doing that? Mm, she makes a living. I must go, Booba. Be well, Jack. It's a fuel can. It's a pipe leading to a fuel tank. It's a closed panel. It's a screwdriver. There's no point in doing that. It's a can full of fuel. It's a length of hose pipe. It's an ignition key. It's a missile from the battle that hasn't exploded yet. I can't leave things all over the place. I can see the warhead inside, and it's still armed. I'm not taking the warhead while it's primed to explode. That would be a waste of time. I should be careful where I put things. It's the unexploded warhead from the missile. An explosion has blown a hole in the roof. Be able to do. 
dig through that. It's a drilling machine for extracting underground gases. It's the business end of the drilling rig. It's the pipe where the mined gas comes out. It's where the fuel for the drilling rig goes. I can't do that. There's no gas coming out yet. the ignition keyhole for the drilling rig. I'll have to put it in a keyhole first. I filled the canister with terranium gas. the guy always end up filling up a girl's vehicle with gas? I better tell Andropath that I've refueled the ship. I got the fuel. You've got a full tank of gas now. Can I go free for that? No, you can't. While I was on the planet, I found out what that disaster is all about. There's an alien invasion force sweeping through this sector, killing everyone in its path. Since we're on the wrong side of the front line, we should try to find out where they came from. They must be communicating with their home world somehow. So if I can find two of their transmitters and triangulate the vectors, we can hit them where it hurts. What, just you and me? No, I'll tell our forces where to attack. Mind you, I wouldn't mind having a pop at them myself. They murdered every single one of those miners. So, where to next? To the front line. Thank you.
Have you seen my mascot? No, no, not me. Don't know what you're talking about. Wow, looks like a war zone. Hold it right there. I'm requisitioning this ship in the name of the Federation. You can't do that. I'm a registered Federation law enforcer. I paid my subscription. Sorry, lady cop, but my orders are to keep this ship right here. My corporal is going to remove your ship's navigational gyro, just so you don't get any funny ideas about stealing your ship back. Hey, do I look like a thief? I'm here to sunbathe. My skin needs the sun's rays. Shut up about your appearance for once, lad. Listen, army man, you'll be sorry about this. I'm sure you'll fill out lots of complaint forms, call my superior officer, and make a thorough nuisance of yourself. But there's a war going on here, and the army's in charge. Thank you for your cooperation. You are free to go where you please. Unless it's a restricted area, of course. Have a nice day. Maybe we can find out some answers here. Let's find the forces, Commander. What are you doing? I'm going to try to get my ship back. What do you want me to do? Find where they keep the gyro and steal it back. It's a combat scooter. One of the scooter mechanics must have dropped that wrench. holds the latrine steady, in case of sudden gusts of wind, I guess. Get out of here, Poi Voight! Nice army you got here. Yes, brave lad, one and all. Especially the squad I've sent off to tackle the invading forces. Facing insurmountable odds, my boys will die with dignity. You expect your men to die? Oh, yes. We haven't attained our correct casualty quota for this week yet. My statistics must tally with the projected figures. Let us have our ship back. Uh, it belongs to the military now. I don't speak to authority. all my possessions. gyro from the Relentless. Those soldiers stole it. How 
never be able to open that door. It's an Annihilator class battle tank. She can't be in the tank, can she? Oh no, she is. She's stealing the tank. She's locked the door, women drivers. Stop the tank. I want to get off. Oh, shut up. See if you can find some sort of control switch for the tank's cannon out there. Turn it to on. Okay, but you'd better stop when I've done it. If I broke those, the tank would stop. Tempting, but I'd better not. The tank is fully armed already. It was you, wasn't it? You destroyed that tank, which was about to kill us. I don't know why you did it, but thanks anyway. I couldn't sit there and watch you die. It was the right thing to do. Oh, please. With all this sentiment and bad driving, I think I'm gonna throw up. Come on, let's get back to the ship. In a minute. There's something I need to do first. Leave that alone, lad. I'll handle the technical stuff. Now I've got one of the vectors to the invader's homeworld. the navigation gyro should be. Gyro's back in place. Good. I got one of the vectors to the invader's homeworld. Now we have to find another one. Apparently there's a lot of radio transmitter activity on Gelt. You'd like it there. It's a leisure resort. Shame there won't be anyone left alive. Guess I'll have to pour my own drinks then. You have no compassion. Don't you care about what's happening? Nope. No? Well, yeah. Sort of. I've never cared about anyone but myself before. No one's worth caring about. If you stopped indulging yourself in hedonistic practices, maybe you'd find someone who is. Listen up, Jack. This is a large entertainment complex, and you know what that means. Drinking, 
gambling, women. Yes, I'm afraid so. Sounds like heaven. Which is exactly why I want you to stay on board. You just hang around here whilst I find the alien beacon. I'm sure you can think of something to occupy your mind. It's not my mind that needs occupying. I want to leave the ship. Why go out there? What's wrong with it in here? I want to see this place for myself. You think I'm stupid? You want to go and gamble and get up to no good? This is no way for a grown man to behave. I want to leave the ship. Why go out there? What's wrong with it in here? I think Izan needs some help. What help are you? You'll help her get into trouble given half a chance, I'm sure. I want to leave the ship. Why go out there? What's wrong with it in here? I need a drink. So stay in here. I can replicate some chicken soup like only Booba knows how. I think I'll pass, thanks. I want to leave the ship. Why go out there? What's wrong with it in here? Yzan could be in danger. My Yzan's in trouble? She should have a man to protect her. Since we have no real men around, you'll have to do. Get out there, quick! I must go, Booba. Be well, Jack. can't resist a sneak around this place. Hello there. I'm sorry, I, I can't talk right now. I'm supposed to be meeting some colleagues that my company have sent here. Welcome, sir. I'm losing myself in your deep eyes. I am just privileged to have set eyes on such a perfect example of the male physique. You've got a fantastic figure. Not as lean as your fine body, sir. Any girl would be proud to inspect your form at close quarters. Would you like a closer look at my body? I can think of nothing greater than rubbing massaging oils over every one of your highly developed muscles and gently caressing every area of your bare flesh. What are you doing after work tonight? I'm switched off, sir. Switched off? Oh, yes, sir. I am a biogenetic simuloid, an artificial replicated human form. Oh, I see. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't still do all that rubbing stuff you were talking about. I'm afraid that's not possible, sir. I'm just programmed to flirt outrageously. I am presently set on tantalized tease and titillate mode. Our customers seem to like it. I hope I haven't caused you any inconvenience. Nothing a good dry clean won't fix. What is this place? Welcome to the Lucky Store. We are the universally renowned casino and hotel complex. Please let me know how I can help you. Can I come in? And who are you, sir? The name's Lad. Jack T. Lad. I'm awfully sorry, sir. I don't seem to have you memorized as an expected guest. Didn't your mother always tell you to expect the unexpected? I'm what she was referring to. I have no doubt, sir, but I'm afraid I have to abide by the rules. This is a casino, and I'm Jack. The two go together like bread and butter, like peanut butter and jelly, like girls' school changing rooms and peepholes. You must allow me in. Sorry, sir, but unless you're an expected party, I have my instructions. I don't need any more help, thanks. Good fortune to you, sir. I'm afraid you can't go through this, sir. I'm with him. Please go on through. He's a mean-looking bouncer. He's a sharp, shuffling dealer. They're playing a game. He's busy gambling his money away. The cabaret isn't performing tonight. There stands another poor gambler. The cabaret isn't performing tonight. They're playing a game. He's a card dealer. They're playing a game. I believe the correct term for his job is behavioral supervisor and enforcer. 
He doesn't look in the mood for a philosophical discussion debating the significance or futility of an individual existence. Please do not interrupt. We are in the middle of a game. Now is not the time for me to try to start a meaningful relationship with her. Leave me alone. I'm busy playing. I see no point in requesting a drink when there's no intoxicating ingredients. Now is not the time for me to try to start a meaningful relationship with her. My favorite type of droid, one that serves drinks. Shame they're not alcoholic. He's busy gambling his money away. This looks like fun. How do I take part? We are playing an unusual game, sir. One designed for the more experienced player. Hey, I've had more experience gambling than I've had dating redheads. I'll master the game in no time, and I'm willing to bet on it. But Sir appears to have no stake. I'm worth a fortune. I arrived on that large spaceship in the docking bay, you know. Very well, Sir. A little more practice may be needed. Wow, that's a tough game. But I love a good challenge. I think I'm just getting the hang of the rules. Let's play. I'm sorry, sir, but you have lost your stake. The house now owns your starship. What? You didn't think I was serious about betting the ship, did you? <laughs> just a little gaming room humor. I mean, the Relentless doesn't even belong to me. Excuse me, sir. We take a very dim view of patrons gambling with stakes they did not own. I'm afraid that we have strict rules for dealing with dishonesty here. We don't need the likes of you round here, capiche? You need to be taught a lesson. Carl, take this lowlife and deal with him appropriately. I bet you've never done an honest day's work in your life. Well, you can start today by helping out our chef. This is the most important ingredient of any dish. Once you put this on, Everyone assumes you're a great cook. I see nothing special. The fluid in this jug smells really sour. It seems to contain some sweet-smelling liquid. You're not going anywhere until Chef says so. He's here to ensure I don't play hooky. As if. In these four walls, what he says is gospel. So you are the lowlife who must somehow assist me, eh? Have you had any experience in the kitchen? No, not really. Such ignorance of surely the world's oldest profession. I wouldn't say that exactly. So, you're the cook. The cook? Impudent creature. I am the chef. I am the creator of the finest cuisine in the whole of the galaxy. My sheer brilliance is boundless, and I shall be recorded in history as a master of my craft. Can you give me any betting tips? Only that the man who upsets the chef is gambling with his life. What do you think about the alien invasion? I care not about any invading force, unless, of course, it means a change to the number for dinner. Can I go yet? Well, is your dedication to the culinary arts. You have not yet completed your given honor of assisting me. What do you want me to do? Now, before we begin, have you washed your hands? But of course, chef. Good. Now I am only trusting you with a very simple task. You shall mix my special nubacious follicle sauce. What should I do first? I can see that in your case, for the sake of hygiene, covering your hair will be an absolute necessity. How do I make this sauce stuff? I have left all the necessary ingredients over by the cooker. You will touch nothing else in here. Be sure to add the sweet broth followed by the sour puree and then the bitter mix. Once you are done, bring me a sample of your produce. Please carry on with your work. I do not merely work. I practice my art form to the highest degree of perfection. It 
it's a sample of the food I've prepared. Well, what do you think? Ah, now this is on the borders of being in the realm of very slight acceptability. Because I am of such a benevolent and kind nature, I deem that your duties here are complete. All I ask is that you never return. Just get out of here, pal. Okay, pal. You're free to leave. But the boss wants to see you upstairs. By the way, Mr. Pastry Hat, remember I told you that I'd wash my hands? I lied. Get out! Get out! Get out! He's still busy looking for the rest of his party. Good day to you, sir. Does sir wish me to find a replacement for his jacket? What's wrong with my jacket? It's not quite the caliber of attire we're used to in this establishment, sir. Would you like me to completely strip? I don't think that will be necessary. Sir is obviously happy with his dress. Can I book a room here? Sir should be aware that due to the gambling element that exists here, we ask patrons to pay for accommodation in advance. Can you accept my solemn promise as advance payment for a room? With all due respect, sir, I cannot accept the word of any man who considers leather apparel to be a necessary part of his wardrobe. Do you know how to play any of the games in the casino? I do not frequent that area of this complex. Can you lend me some money? Surely, sir, is joking. Do you understand all that polite etiquette stuff? Of course, sir. One should learn that it is a crime to perform an action that would offend your assistants. That's similar to one of my sayings. The more offenders I associate with, the greater criminal actions I can learn. Can you explain which cutlery I should use at dinner? Certainly, sir. You should use the outer cutlery first and work your way inwards. Oh. Uh, the question I really wanted answering was whether to use the plastic fork or cardboard spoon to scoff my beans. So, what's wrong with drinking out of a saucer? Sir, that is the habit of an animal. Sounds like you've been talking to some of my ex-girlfriends. It's been an education talking to you. Goodbye, sir. She's the receptionist. Do you need any help, sir? Hello there. And to whom do I have the pleasure of talking? My name is Miss Fjord, sir. Can I call you by your first name, Miss Fjord? My first name is Harrisianetta. For the sake of proper office etiquette and to save your pronunciation efforts, I would prefer to use Miss Fjord, sir. And what does Miss Fjord do here? I run this office, sir. I am responsible for controlling appointments, controlling correspondence, and handling all administration. What do you do to relax? I must confess, sir, that occasionally I do let myself go a bit. I permit myself to indulge in a bit of filing. What are you doing with those papers? I'm busy sorting out these sheets alphabetically, whilst cross-referencing the indexes with the alternately titled contents pages. Of course, that's as well as filing the predated referral codes against the sequentially referenced order numbers. If only I had the time, or even the slightest inclination, to help you. I've never been called Sir so much. And what are you normally called, sir? You know, you'd be great at feeding the straight lines in a comedy act. Oh no, sir. I'm quite happy in this job. I just bet you are. You have quite an unusual name. Yes, I know, sir. My parents insist it was after some ancient Earth video star. In my experience, most parents are struck by a sudden impulse to come up with a really original name, which invariably leads to a life of misery for their poor child. Your boss wanted to see me. Yes. Mr. Ladd, isn't it? Please go on through. Well, well, well. If it isn't my old buddy, Jack T. Ladd. Tenant, what are you doing here? And why are you sitting in the boss's chair? Why do you think, Jack? I am the boss. 
He's the owner of this joint. I haven't seen you in ages. Yeah, and I'm pleased to say that life is pretty good at the moment. In fact, coincidentally, things started looking up just after we parted company. How did you know I was here? When I heard that some guy was gambling away a ship that wasn't even his, I had this strange feeling that you were about. Can I have my ship back? I'm real sorry, Jack. Please understand that I can't be seen to grant special favors to my old drinking pals. Why did you let me sweat in the kitchens? Hey, Jack, I still owed you for that time I ended up bound naked and covered in honey next to the den of hungry and randy prickly bears. Remember? How did you get to be boss here? Piece of cake, Jack. I won the whole place in a card game. The stakes were real high that night. If I would have lost, my chances of ever having kids would have been cut by half. Literally. How's your love life? Definitely on the up. In fact, I think you're about to see for yourself. Hi there, boys. This is the beauty who is responsible for my extreme state of happiness. Jack, I'd like you to meet. Ruthie, pa-pow to pa -pow. It's been a long time, Ruthie. You two know each other? If you want me, I'll be outside. So how well do you know Ruthie? Mostly in the biblical sense. We had a thing going a while ago. It was your usual story of boy meets girl, girl meets boy. Boy meets girl's grandlord, master father. Girl's father creates secret crystal to gain access to another dimension holding universe's tax records. Boy uses crystal to destroy lord master's sky city. Girl and boy set off into sunset. Girl dumps boy and runs off with record producer who says he can make her a star. Anyway, that's a different story. See you around, tenant. Count on it, Jack. What are you doing with Tennant? He's such a lowlife. And what do you know of him, Jack? He's one of my oldest drinking partners. We've been through a lot together. Through a lot of beer, through a lot of women, through a lot of bar windows. Are you happy here? I should say so. I used to think happiness was having a walk-in closet. Now I've got a drive through wardrobe. Did you recover after I left you? Hey. I left you. Well, technically speaking, I suppose you did. And just because I couldn't afford that new cocktail dress you wanted. A girl has to have her priorities. We made such sweet music together. Some might say you're tone deaf, Jack. Could you lend me some money? Just so that you can gamble it all away? I think I've sacrificed enough in my life for you to owe me. I'll take that as a no, then. Will you help me? That depends on what you want. I need Tennant to return my ship. I suppose I could help you out for old time's sake. I'll see if I can persuade him to be a little more understanding. Dum -da -dum. Ooh. <sighs> oh, Ruthie. Tenant. Oh, sorry. Sounds like Ruthie's found out why he's called Two Second Tenant. Anyway, he sounds like he's persuaded by now. Can I help you, sir? Do you need any help, sir? Your boss wanted to see me. Yes, Mr. Ladd, isn't it? Please go on through. my ship back. Ruthie has convinced me that I should give you a fair chance to get your ship back. You're going to have to win it back. I'll tell the croupiers to let you play the tables. Bring me at least 40 credits and the ship is yours. Can I have some free credit? No can do, buddy. Anyway, as I recall, you still owe me money from the last time I bailed you out on Kinos Gamma. How about a drink? I'm afraid alcohol is illegal on this planet. 
Anyway, I gave up the liquor after the last time we met. Maybe you've forgotten what we did with that Hershey and pig monkey in those tongs, but I had to have surgery and months of counseling. See you around, Tenant. Count on it, Jack. My sort of place. Mine too. The sound of cards hitting bays makes my neck hairs stand on end. I know what you mean. I get something kind of similar involving leather and bare flesh. Can I get a drink around here? I'm afraid not. Any intoxicating substances are illegal on this planet. You may be about to see a grown man cry. Why is there no cabaret performing tonight? The dancers are so erotic, and the audiences get so frenzied that they only perform every other night to let everyone recover. I'd swear that Yizan timed our visit here deliberately. How's your luck holding out today? Great, thanks. For the first time in ages, my pockets are stuffed with winnings. I've decided to just watch for the rest of today. Could I borrow some of your chips? I'd love to share my good fortune, but unfortunately I've got this large tax bill hanging over my head. And you know what those tax men are like. Believe me, I know. Do you know how to play all the games here? I'm no expert, but I've been coming here long enough to know all the rules. Do you know how to play the game at this table? A tricky game to master, but I'm pretty good. Can you give me some pointers on gameplay? I'm having so much fun watching you work it out. You play a little bit more, and then maybe I'll help you. I've got some serious gambling to do. Good luck. It looks like his pocket is crammed full of casino chips. Wow, she looks like she should be on global television. These stupid laces just won't stay tied. I can't leave things all over the place. I don't want to lose all my possessions. Sir, it would seem you have mastered the game. Late, sir. It would seem you have mastered the game. Well played, sir. It would seem you have mastered the game. to speak to Tennant. Certainly, Mr. Ladd. See you.
you around, Tenant. Count on it, Jack. Good on you, Jack. I see you haven't lost your old skills. You can have your ship back. But if anyone should ask, it had nothing to do with me. Okay? I really ought to get back to the ship before I missed. Welcome back at last. I've been so bored stuck in here. You took your time down there. I've uh, been keeping watch, making sure no aliens got on board. Uh, none did, by the way. Good. I've got the coordinates to find the invader's homeworld now. But we've received a distress call. A bunch of colonists are being attacked by indigenous creatures on an unexplored planet not too far from here. We're the closest Federation ship. Why haven't the invaders attacked that planet? They must have ignored it, since officially there are no humans there. Let's get going then. The Jack Lad Cavalry to the rescue. You know, Lad, I think there may be a human being inside you. Deep, deep down inside, struggling to get out. Hello there. I'm not gonna hurt you. Oh well. Scared by all the fighting, I suppose. Hello, Narm. Hi there, Jack. What have you been up to? Let me see. We last saw each other just as I came to your rescue on that schmull planet. After the explosion, you were busy consoling that Ruthie girl about the loss of her father. You sent me looking for her precious gold needle amongst the wreckage. When I returned, I couldn't seem to find either of you. And I'm sorry to report that I just couldn't find that needle. Anyway, everything turned out just great for me, since I eventually joined up with the IXMF. What is the IXMF? The Interstellar Xenophobic Mercenary Force. Do you enjoy being in the IXMF? It's great, Jack. We get to carry the biggest guns you've ever seen, and shooting things isn't just legal, it's part of our job description! What are you doing here? Our mission is to help the colonists here combat the vicious monsters that are attacking them. Hey, they got bugs, and we're the exterminators. What do the colonists need? Apparently, they want the thing that spawns all the other creatures destroyed, and they'd like to study an unhatched egg. 
Where are these eggs? Probably somewhere in the labyrinth of caves, along with all the creatures. Describe these creatures. Oh, they're real nasty, Jack. But they do make a lovely squishy sound when shot. Be singing, Arm. With you all the way, buddy. Well, what's going on here? Apparently, this planet has been overrun by some hideous creatures. The interstellar xenophobic mercenary force were called in and have done what they do best. They've wandered around showing off their big guns and made lots of noise with some loud explosions. Little boys playing with their toys as usual. It's a good job I got here in time. Do you know how we can help the people on this planet? Well, apparently they need to destroy the creature that spawns all the others. And if they can get hold of one of the eggs, be able to work out a biological way of keeping the pests under control. Okay, Jack. I'll deal with the spawner whilst you get these people their egg. Stealing eggs. <laughs> this takes me back to my childhood days. You'll be needing some help, Jack. Just like the good old days, you can always rely on your sidekick, Narm. I'll go ahead and clear the way of those ugly creatures for you. Don't be a fool, Narm. What am I saying? Being a fool is what Narm does best. I have nothing to say. Who are you? My name is Collins. I'm one of the small group of people who are attempting to colonize this place. In fact, I've sort of been unofficially elected to be the leader of the colonists. You look terrible. Why, thanks, pal. But I know what you mean. We're in the middle of a battle with some hideous beasts that we weren't expecting to be down here. What are these creatures like? They've got ravenous appetites and they seem to reproduce at an incredibly fast rate. Mm. Those character traits seem all too familiar. They seem to know no fear, although we have noticed that they react to strong odors. You must be very distressed. You're too right. We were meant to be a peace-loving colony, so we're not really equipped to defend ourselves. How do you calm your nerves? With our stocks of alcohol. Bingo! That was the correct answer we were looking for. You win tonight's star prize, the chance to revitalize a man who has been without drink for far too long. I'm real sorry, pal. We've just finished all our supplies yesterday. That figures. Do you know that guy over there? He's one of the IXMF soldiers sent here by the Federation to try to protect us. Goodbye, and good luck. Thanks. This planet gives me the creeps. Just get on with looking for that egg. Once we've helped out these colonists, we can get back to finding that source of the alien invasion. Colonists, creatures, mercenaries, aliens, invasions. You certainly know how to show a guy a good time. What do I do once I've found an egg? Just give it to the leader of the colonists and wait for me back on the Relentless. What are you doing with that gun? At the moment, I'm planning to use it to blast away the creature that's spawning all the others. But I could just as easily use it on a lazy thief who refuses to hurry up and do what his arresting officer tells him to do. I think I understand your subtly hidden message. Can I borrow your gun? You gotta be joking, Jack. I think you're treating our prisoner-captor relationship a little too casually. I'm a busy man. So you should be. I don't feel like talking. It's the bite puppy being kept busy. Arms unwashed socks, enough to stun an elephant at 50 feet. Rifling through Narm's possessions would be too much like performing a psychoanalysis of a lunatic's mind. I'm not touching a flea-infested bite puppy.
It's one of the eggs produced by those slimy creatures. I hope whatever laid the eggs isn't still around. I can't believe you went running off like that, Narm. Yeah, but I found this whole stash of eggs. They're quite tasty, by the way. We'd better get one of the eggs back to the colonists. I don't want to stay in here any longer than I have to. I haven't seen any of those ugly creatures. That's because they can't stand your body odor. I used your socks to repel them. Narm strikes again! I'm not feeling that generous. Here's that egg you wanted. Thank you. How can we ever repay you? Have you got any daughters? I'm afraid not. Got any liquor then? Uh, no. Sorry. Any hard cash? No. Oh well, I guess I did it as a favor then. Thanks for all your help. I have nothing to say. Hey Jack, what a team we make, eh? Want me to come with you? No, 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 definitely not, Norm. Your place is with the IXMF. You are ideally suited to each other. Okay then. But if you ever need my help again, just send out a message on the IXMF hotline. Hear from you soon. Gotta be going. feel like talking. Well, the colonists now have an egg they can analyze. Maybe they can develop a nerve gas that will wipe those creatures out once and for all. Genocide, eh? Have we finally found something you hate more than you hate men? I don't hate men. I just never met one I didn't want to kill, that's all. That's a big difference. Okay, where to now? Well, apparently, the vector to the alien homeworld points to a space station called the Corrupticon. The Corrupticon. That's the headquarters of the Taxmen. Yeah, it doesn't make much sense, does it? Taxmen. I hate those guys. I'm also picking up weird energy readings from that area. Come on, I think we're close to solving this mystery. Hey, I thought we were going to call in the military for this. We can't handle it on our own. Jack, there's no military left. Our Navy's been defeated. The survivors are on the run. We're the human race's only hope of survival. What's taking so long? Shouldn't we be at the Corrupticon by now? Yes, Jack, but we've got a slight problem. Booba seems to have malfunctioned. You mean we're flying around in deep space with a hostile alien invasion force on the loose and our main computer that controls everything on board has freaked out? Stop panicking, Jack. I've managed to alter the navigation systems to take us to the planet nearest to the Corrupticon. We'll just kill some time there whilst Booba reboots the ship's systems. Do you want to know my favorite way of killing time? No, Jack, I definitely do not. Stay out of my way, you useless tick! You're so horrible to me. Give me a break. I guess you're right. Sorry. But don't touch anything on board my ship. What? Not even... Especially the pilot. Okay, 
While the computer's rebooting, I'm going to explore. You do that. I'm going to find some food. I'm starving. What are we doing on this boring rock? We're waiting for Booba to repair the Relentless. I'm hungry. You're always hungry. Nice butt. Lousy sense of humor. This chapel is sacred. You must leave at once. Can you try to get into the altar room? There's food in there, and I want it. Even a prisoner has the right to be fed. I hope you don't expect me to fix all your meals. He's the holiest guy on this planet. What is this place? This is Haven, a tranquil place of rest and worship, where travelers can find food and shelter, warriors can find peace and harmony, and cool people can be bored out of their pants. Yeah, I get the picture. Who lives here? There are only the monks who tend the land, care for the livestock, a little too much in my opinion, and they look after the holy artifacts. What are the holy artifacts? The holy artifacts ensure our peace and harmony. The pillar of light shows us the way. The hexagon of truth shows us how to get there. And the flower of fire gives us the strength for our spiritual journey. Where do the monks come from? The pillar of light brings them forth into the world from the oblivion that is ignorance. They remain here for the rest of their lives. I've always wondered why you religious types wear women's clothes. Many great philosophers have pondered that very question. I guess it's because we can get away with it. Later, pal. I ain't got religion yet. It's a brilliant column of searing light. I have nothing to say. Looks like he's been crushed. It's a hole in the ceiling. It's an offering to the gods. Looks more like an offering to my taste buds. I can't do that. Great, some food at last. Well done, Greedy Guts. You have committed the most heinous of sins. Violation of the sacrifice is almost the worst crime you can commit. You will therefore be in prison for the rest of your natural lives. Think yourself lucky heretics. If you violated the holy flower of fire, the punishment would be death. You and your stomach! How are we gonna get out of this one? Ah, uh, look. 
Sorry about all this. You will be, creep. Just get us out of here. It's a long way down. Now this is a really dumb idea. It doesn't feel right to ruin such a lovely floral display like this. Maybe if I was in disguise. It's a flower. I wonder why it's here all by itself. It's a vat for pressing wine grapes. It's where the pressed grape juice comes out. Much as I'd like a drink, I should keep a clear head right now. some extra zing. Let me try some of this stuff. Now look what you've done. I shall have to wash this wine off my habit. Enjoy your swim, sucker. Don't worry, I'm in control of the situation. Stay in here while I create a diversion. If they think we've both escaped, they'll mess up my plan. I don't know if I can really trust you. Oh, what the heck. Things can't get any worse. I'm gonna lay a trail of clues that leads to this cell. That will divert the guards long enough for me to get to the ship. Don't worry, I'll get us out of this. I feel safer already. Really? You trust in me? No. Flowered our holiest relic. We shall disintegrate the offworlder before the entire monastery. Go and grab the offender from her vile cell and take her to the pillar of light. Bring the offworlder. Go forth and seek the afterlife, sinner. I just live religion. <laughs> I didn't think they were really going to kill her. I'll miss that curvaceous figure and that sharp tongue. I suppose I should carry out her last wish and stop the invaders myself. If I talk to him, he'll know I'm not a monk.
Where's my Yazan? I'm sorry, Booba. There's been an accident. She was captured and... She's hurt? Worse? Oy, why couldn't she listen to her, Booba? Why did I trust her with you? What have you done? Hey, I cared for her too, you know. You cared, Jack? Yeah, well, we've been through a lot together, you know. Zan was okay. The best I could wish for. What are we gonna do now? We should do what she would have wanted. Get to that trans-dimensional rip and deal with the invasion force. Booba, plot a course for the Corrupticon. We're going in. Ooh, you're not such a bad boy, Jack. If only my Gizan was around, who knows? Go, Booba. Be well, Jack. output screen for the console. It's a subspace communicator. It looks as if it still works. It's an interstellar phone book. Oops, wrong button. I didn't break it. I didn't. XMF toll-free number. I can contact Narm Nepom now. All I need is a communications console. That's it. I've beamed the coordinates of this station to Narm. Maybe he can help me stop this station from blowing up. And if he can't, I don't see why I should be the only one to get killed. Thanks for coming, old pal. Thanks for coming, old pal. That's a stupid question, even for you, lad. When you stole a transitron from me before, it got shot by your idiotic sidekick, Nam. It sent me and my fortress into another dimension. Then when the invaders came through, I snuck back to... What happened here? The taxmen were storing all their files on everyone in the known universe in Dimension 238, fought to the uninhabited. But it wasn't. Then, when the transitron was broken, it gave those aliens from the other dimension the opportunity to come into our dimension. They were pretty annoyed about all the paper floating about in their space, apparently. They used the remnants of the transitron to open the dimensional anomaly which runs through this station. 
but because there's a piece of the transitron missing, the anomaly is unstable. If the transitron was repaired, it could close the portal between the dimensions, and the resulting imbalance would suck the invading fleet back to where it came from. I don't know where the last piece of the transitron is. I'm in too much trouble to talk to you. What the heck is that? Ugh, I feel sick. Thank the stars. You're safe. Uh, not that I care, you understand. Uh, but this place is about to go ballistic. How are we going to get out of this one? We've got to close the portal. It was created here, and if we can shut it off, the invaders will be cut off from their homeworld, so they'll have to surrender. Have you seen a purple crystal called a transitron anywhere? I got it, but it didn't have any effect on the anomaly, so I left it there. How did you get here? I thought you were dead. You're so dumb! Those monks were a tired taxman! The Pillar of Light is a teleport device where they send taxmen too old to work anymore. They can't let them back into society, not with what they know. Their memories must be wiped too, so they're oblivious to the truth. Since you're safe, can you save my life, please? We need to close the anomaly. It started here, so there must be a way to close it here too. Catch you later, babe. It looks like the pillar of light. Thanks for coming, old pal. Did you see what happened to the rest of the Transitron when you shot it, back on Shmuel? Yeah, it lodged in my helmet. Here, you can have it. be good. Honest. Okay. I'll tell the court you helped me save the galaxy. Hey, I did all the work. You're not taking the credit for my heroism. What heroism? Listen, you sniveling pizza. Mm -hmm. 